I'm, I'm going to begin just by asking how you sort of came to be involved with with, with this script because obviously it's a brilliant screenplay by Emma and just how how you sort of, yeah where your involvement sort of started. Yeah, I mean I was going to do a movie with Emma a couple of years ago called Late Night. Uh, we were working on it. You know, I met with her and we just became really close friends quickly. And then the scheduling didn't work out for that, but we always stayed in contact saying, we have to do something together. And then she just dropped this <laughs> script into my inbox one day about a year and a half ago, and I couldn't believe how great it was, and I said, I'm in. Because I mean, it's one of those even though it's a bit sort of Christmas movie, there's, it sort of captures as well this sort of time, and it's quite specific to the sort of millennial, I suppose, is kind of the expression, but this generation where people get to the sort of late 20s, early 30s, and there is a sort of crossroads a lot of people face. Was that part of the, the attraction of Utana's story, was tackling that kind of, that sort of conflict we have inside us at that sort of quite tumultuous age. Well, yeah, I really I really like this lead character of Kate because she is, she is in a real tumultuous time in her life and she's making a lot of weird decisions and decisions that aren't normally something your hero would do. And I like that because I like a really good challenging role for, for, you know, for a female, you know, for a woman. And um, yeah, and, but it does feel very, I know like, People I know in their 20s watch this, and especially young women in their 20s, and say, like, these are the kind of things that my friends and I are going through. You know, this really kind of time in your life when you're trying to figure it all out. Because you do see quite sort of um, attracted to female-led stories. Where's that sort of fascination come from for you, to tell stories from that, from that particular perspective? I just enjoy telling stories about, about complicated women. You know, I feel like women's roles on the screen have been not great for a number of decades, uh, especially in the comedy space, where they've just become sort of basically props for, for the funny guys in the movie. And uh, I have just so many friends who are, who are women, and I love their stories and their, their friendships and all that. I just want to bring that to the screen. And so I've been mean, talking of, of that. I mean, Amelia is such a likable person, and the, yeah. she, and the character it requires someone that the audience really needs to invest in. You yeah. must have been so thrilled when when she came on board. On this oh yeah, I, I, I met with her about four years ago, just in a general meeting, and couldn't believe how funny she was, and just how much what a great energy she had about her. And I really wanted to get that into a film. And so when I read this the first time, I was just like, she's the one that can pull off this character who who can be frustrating at times, but you always will root for her. And I mean, I, I remember when I saw um, Crazy Rich Asians, I just thought to myself, Henry Golding has got a touch of James Bond about him. There's someone, he's got that kind of charm. And there's a little Bond joke in this. I was wondering if that was a little nod, to because he's been rumoured to it. But just but in respect of that, do you think that he, Henry would make a, a good James Bond? Would you be back I in his corner? I think Henry would be the greatest James Bond ever. I, I Honestly, I, I Henry can do no wrong in my eyes. I think he's the greatest. But I, yeah, he you know, first of all, he, he looks great in a tuxedo. That I know. And uh, yeah, I think he would kill it. He would crush it. And you, you really managed to sort of capture London, I think, and British comedic sort of sensibilities as well. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm just going to, I'm assuming this, but have you, did you, have you always been a big fan of sort of British comedy? And, and is that something that you've been, you drew a lot from when you were making a film that was set in the British capital? Yeah, I mean, I've just been such a fan of British comedy. It really formed who I am from Monty Python on. And, you know, I just love, I just, I just, there's something about the turns of phrase and just the characters and just the way they look at life. I just find very funny. And um, yeah, so it really helped me in doing this because I wanted to make, I want to make a British film that kind of worked everywhere. And Emma and I had to occasionally kind of uh, figure out references and, and terms that would be understood both in the US and in Britain. And so, uh, but, but it helped just make the, make the script a little more universal. You're talking of um, implementing sort of British uh, stuff at the moment. It, they managed to get Brexit in there as well. <laughs> we, got, we got it all. <laughs> I'm just wondering about what you think that brings to the story. Because this is a big kind of festive movie. That it's got fantasy elements. It's romantic and stuff like that. But there is a un, there's an underlying kind of quite social political context. But what do you think that brings to the, this particular story? I just think it makes it more honest. You know, I mean, this is a story of an immigrant family who had to flee their country and come to a different country and are struggling to you know in this place where they don't couldn't do what they used to do. And you can't really make an honest movie set in London in 2017 with, about immigrants without having at least a, a nod to, to Brexit uh, and how it affects them. We don't want to make a political movie, but it, it would affect how they, how they are getting along in the world. So my final question, I was wondering, because I saw on Twitter, I mean, you responded, because I love the movie, I should say, first and foremost, but I saw that you responded to the to an, a review that wasn't as, as friendly <laughs> today with real sort of grace. You, sort of, you were very thankful, I think it was the Rolling Stone review. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering about being a filmmaker and dealing with kind of reviews, both positive and negative, and how that's changed for you across your career. And, and if you've, if you adapt, if you're, yeah, if your reaction different now to a negative review than it would be 10 or 15 years ago? Well, I mean, you're always sad when you get a negative review, just because, you know, you, you want to please everybody and you always think, 
think, you know, your movie's the greatest movie of all time. Um, but, I mean, the critics have been great to me, and the critics have been mean, or mean hard on my movies sometimes. But if you're going to believe the good ones, you have to believe the bad ones, or you just have to kind of go, look, that's people's opinions, and I respect it. You know, I, I, sometimes I don't agree with their opinion, clearly, but... but that's everybody's opinion is valid and and you know so it's for me it's just like I, I just don't want I get nervous when somebody's bad experience or so, if they bring something to watching it that then affects how they feel about the movie to affect keeping away somebody who would actually really enjoy the film so I think that's the only thing I, I always get nervous about with with critics but uh, no but I love critics Brilliant. thanks so much for your time today really Cheers. Cheers. thank you ladies and gentlemen you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!